Hi, um, I wanted to introduce myself. Um, I am Dr. Pat Lord. I'm in the biology department. I'm a senior lecturer, but um, how you will get to know me um, is as the director of the pre-health professions program here at Wake Forest. One of my colleagues, Dr. Carol Brown, who's also in the biology department, is the pre-allied health professions advisor. You will also likely meet her and get to know her as well. Um, one of the questions you might have is, what's the difference between the health professions versus allied health professions, and, and what should you do, and how do you know what courses to take? We'll be talking a lot to you about this in the fall semester, your first semester here at Wake Forest, but sort of the way to think about it is the health professions careers are more uh, physician, dentist, optometrist, um, where you have a lot of extensive training, um, and you are often usually the one making the diagnosis. So, allied health careers would be considered um, uh, physical therapy, physician's assistants, as well as uh, occupational therapist, among others, but those are some of the major ones. The point of this video today is to help you, regardless of what area you're, you're interested in, uh, plan what courses to take for the fall semester since you will be doing registration for those courses before you actually get here. I know too that there's lots of questions that you have in your mind uh, because I've already gotten emails from a lot of you, like how do I get into medical school, what do I do? We have a long time to think about that and to plan for that, three to four years. So right now this video is just focused on what you need to think about registering for for the fall semester. Um, and again, you may actually change your mind a hundred of times. You may come here thinking you want to do physician assistance and decide you want to do medicine and be a physician. You could come here as a physician and decide you don't like that and you want to be a journalist. That's all fine. We just need to get you started into the right coursework. And one of the best ways to find what courses um, is not just this video, but our website, which is at college .wfu.edu slash prehealth. Everything that I'm going to tell you today is also on that website. Another important part uh, of being involved in the prehealth professions community here at Wake Forest is to subscribe to our listserv, which is the prehealth listserv. Directions for subscribing to the prehealth listserv is on the homepage for college.wfu.edu slash prehealth. But more importantly than just subscribing is to actually read the emails and follow the directions in the emails when I send out emails to you about important events that are happening. Or it may even be emails about information about new sections of courses opening or other courses that you should be thinking about registering for. Um, I'm always surprised at the number of my students that miss events and I ask them if they got the email from me and they say yes, but they just didn't bother to read it. So don't just subscribe to our pre-health listserv, but actually read the emails and follow the directions and get involved in the pre-health professions community here at Wake Forest once you get here. Now, on to what should you really be thinking about for the fall. Um, for the fall, the big thing, whether you're thinking about dentistry, medicine, uh, physician's assistants, occupational therapy, or physical therapy, or any other field that I've forgotten to mention, um, it's important to get started with your chemistries. The way chemistries are taught here at Wake Forest is they're taught in, only certain courses are taught in the fall and only certain courses are start, taught in the spring. And for most of the health profession fields, you will need two years of chemistry, two semesters of inorganic chemistry and two semesters of organic chemistry with the labs. So it's very important, even if you don't take any other sciences, to start off with the chemistry because if you don't, it will be fall of next year before you could start in the chemistry sequence. For most of you, that chemistry sequence will be Chem 111 and Chem 111 Lab. That should be something that you register when you can register during uh, the online registration period, um, when you can register for up to eight hours. Again, let me stress, you need to really think about starting with Chemistry 111 and Chemistry 111 Lab Registering for that in the fall and your first eight hours of online registration or when you can register online for up to eight hours of courses. Um, because if you don't, it's another year before you can start that chemistry sequence. Chemistry 111 is inorganic chemistry, so it's basic chemistry. For some of you, you may have taken AP chemistry or uh, international baccalaureate chemistry. If you take the AP exam and score between a four and a five, 
or take the IB exam and score between a six or a seven. You will be invited to register for uh, organic chemistry, chemistry 123 uh, in the fall semester along with chemistry 123 lab. Um, again, this is not something you can register for on your own. You have to be invited to register. So if you know your AP score was a four or five or you, and you know your IB score was a six or a seven on the chemistry exam, please wait until you receive the invitation and you will automatically be put into uh, Orgo 1 or Chemistry 123 and 123 Lab in the fall. Um, it doesn't mean that um, you have to then take Chemistry 111 later. You will get credit for Chemistry 111, Chemistry 111 Lab, and Chemistry 280. So you get a total of seven hours of chemistry credit which is all of the inorganic chemistries except for Chemistry 280 Lab. So, or to summarize where we are right now, you definitely want to, regardless of what you're thinking of majoring in, whether it's a science field or a non-science field, you would definitely want to start off this fall with taking Chemistry 111 and Chemistry 111 Lab. Again, that's important because that's only taught every fall. So you need to take that this fall. Um, other courses for you to be thinking about um, is to take Math 111. Um, most medical schools don't have a strict math requirement. Um, however, Math 111 is a co-requisite for our physics classes um, since we teach a calculus-based physics here. So Math 111 would be another course that you could think about taking. You may get AP credit for Math 111 depending upon if you took the calculus AP exam. Um, which is fine, then you don't necessarily need to register for a math uh, this fall. If you've got a really strong background in the sciences and in math, and what I mean by strong background is that perhaps you've taken several AP science and math and or math classes, um, and you want to take both a chemistry and a biology, if you are not going to be a biology major, then what I would suggest taking is chemistry 111, 111 lab, and Bio 114, which is comparative physiology, along with the lab Bio 114. And that is for students who have a very strong background in the sciences and the math and really want to, or think about majoring in biology and want to go ahead and take the plunge and take two science classes. For students without a strong science and math background, I would recommend just sticking with taking Chemistry 111 and Chemistry 111 Lab for the fall. For students who are thinking about majoring in physics, the advice is a little bit different um, because of how you need to get into your physics classes. And for you, I would recommend taking Physics 113 and 113 Lab in the fall as well as Math 111. That enables you to get into your upper division physics classes in a timely manner you will still be able to take the chemistries and get them done in plenty of time, but we just don't want you to be behind if you're thinking about majoring in physics. So that's what I would recommend you registering for um, during your online registration period when you can register for up to eight hours. After your online registration period, you will fill out a course survey, and from that course survey, uh, you will be registered for other classes. Remember that on that course survey, what you might want to include is a uh, psychology or sociology or a communications course, which again are all listed on the web page. Um, again, because that will help you prepare for the psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior section on the MCAT exam, as well as fulfill the Division 4 requirements. I think that's it for my advice about what you should take during your fall semester. There will be a required orientation session during orientation, I believe it's the Tuesday of orientation week, and at that time you'll meet both myself and Dr. Carol Brown, and we'll talk to you more about opportunities for the fall semester. Again, I look forward to meeting you, and I'll talk to you soon.